Here is the second part of my video series about my self-designed plywood canoe. Hi, I'm Jake and this is the second part of a video series about my self-designed plywood canoe. In the last video I explained the basic ideas behind it, the design process and how I cut out the single parts. In this part I will show you the assembly of the parts so it looks like a real canoe. First I connected the single parts of each plank via scarf joints. To make the joints as accurate as I could I laid the paper templates onto the parts and marked the exact position of the joint. I did this for all parts. In order to minimize the angle error I glued the two parts of each plank of the paper templates together. These long templates were then used to align the wooden parts. Scarf joints are glued with epoxy. I used a similar product called Green Poxy, which consists of 27% natural resource. The epoxy was thickened with cotton fibers to prevent it from flowing out of the joint. The consistency of it should be like creamy honey. I put a non-adhesive foil under the joints and covered both sides of each joint with the epoxy paste. Then I aligned the parts and fixed them with weight plates. On top of the joints I put some more non-adhesive foil, a stiff piece of wood and some more weight plates. Once the epoxy was cured I started sanding the parts with my eccentric grinder and 80 grit. For the bigger parts I did not attach the vacuum cleaner but used a dust collector bag. This way I could save the dust for the epoxy fillets between the plank. To check the lengths of each part I took the longest measurements from the CAD model and measured the wooden parts at the same position. The errors that I made are the numbers and brackets which should be less than 8mm. Also I drilled the holes for the inspection covers into the frames. Here's where I started my canoe project. And this is the way out of the house. So, no way to fit a 4.8 meter canoe through here, so it has to move to some other place. But thanks to my parents-in-law, I got this huge tent. In this tent, I made a canoe rack for the assembly. This canoe rack consists of two long bars and four frames, where the outer ones stay in the canoe and the ones in the middle are being removed. I tried to align the angles as well as I could and then fix it all with screws. Then I put the bottom plate on top of the rack. The lower plank was connected first and at the ends with zip ties and in the middle temporarily with screws that are screwed into the middle frames. The next part was drilling holes into the planks every 20 cm and 1 cm away from the edge. I then put zip ties into the holes to connect the parts. This way I connected all planks and afterwards I started tightening the zip ties in order to minimize the gaps. Therefore I started from the bottom plate again. Next I filled out the gaps with a mixture of epoxy, grinding dust and as much cotton fiber as you need to give it a consistency of peanut butter. In the first step I left out the areas where there were zip ties so I could remove them easily. For removing the zip ties I used a pair of pliers. Then I could fill the left out areas and the holes for the zip ties with the epoxy paste again.
Once the epoxy was cured, I grinded the planks with my eccentric grinder and 120 grit. The edges I sanded by hand. For closing the hull at the ends, I used a clamp from the outer side and made a epoxy fillet from the inside. Then it was time to remove the dust for preparing the hull for the fiberglassing. In the first step I laid a fiberglass fabric on top of the boat with a weight of 160 grams per square meter. I tried to lay it on top of the boat as flat as I could and cut off the overhanging edges. This time I mixed non-thickened epoxy and spread it with this plastic spatula. Later I found out that I'm more the rolling type of guy, so I finished uh, spreading the epoxy with a roller. After this layer was cured, I rolled two more epoxy coatings on top of the boat. To remove the protruding fabric I used a cutter knife. For the next very long period of sanding I used 120 grit and a eccentric grinder. Only the edges were sanded by hand. I hope you liked my video, thanks and goodbye.